I'm here with uh, Neil Williamson, uh, author of The Moon King, uh, which has been shortlisted for the BSFA Awards, uh, which will be held soon. We'll find out the results soon. Um, it's quite an achievement for uh, someone with a debut novel, uh, so we're just going to talk to him a little bit about that. Neil, uh, as I said, it's your, your debut novel. Um, it's been quite a journey to get from where you were, where you started with us, to where you are now. Uh, how, how has that been for you? It's been, yeah, as you say, quite, quite a journey. It's, it's been a long road. Um, I, when I did uh, the book launch for The Moon King, it was almost exactly a year ago, I told the audience that um, from the first word on the page to uh, the actual date of publication was almost exactly nine years. Right. So as soon as I'd got started on, on, on the next one, um, Ian Waits of Newcomb Press asked me had I sold had I sold that one. I said no I haven't. It's not looking very likely unfortunately. And um, I said, Well can I read it? And I said, Okay. It was published and it's done it's done pretty well for yeah. for an indie press. I have to say, um, presses like Newcomb Press and um, which tend to be one or two people operations. The people behind them have such love and dedication for the books they publish, and they have to because they're putting all the resources into those books. Um, we'd <clears throat> we'd also talked about the fact that it's quite a different fantasy. Um, it's uh, I mean, there's familiar, although there's familiar tropes, there's there's a lot of uh, it's crammed with some very original ideas and and some crazy kind of things like uh, automaton monkeys and. And uh, and a city which changes literally with the waxing and waning of the moon. Mm. Uh, were, were there any particular inspirations or th that that you drew from that that inspired what what you put into the Moon King? Um, no, no. Actually, it was really a work of extrapolation. Mm -hmm. um, I decided ten years ago when I decided to write my first novel, I was going to do it by changing the world we know with one thing and the one thing was going to be that the, the moon never set around around the place that the, the story set in. So the moon was never going to set and what was that going to change in the world? So I came up with the idea of the waxing and waning of society and moods and entropy and all, all sorts of things that happen in the city. Everything becomes cyclical. and. Um, when I came up with that idea, I then said, "Well, how do the people work? How does that how does that affect your daily life? Mm -hmm. How does that affect the things you do, the way you behave with other people?" Okay, so, in in that way, there will almost be shades of, of perhaps things like uh, the Haliconia novels, where it's oh. it's about people that are affected so much by by the the seasons, the seasons and, yeah. and what they're what they're surrounded by. So, yeah, it's definitely a fascinating um, topic, and and so the way you've done it is 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 very unique. Thank you. Um, what uh, so what, what lies next? What's what's on the horizon for you? Well, I have a a novel that I've been writing for a little while now, um, which is essentially a prequel to that, but a far in, in the past prequel to that. Mm -hmm. um, it's the story of how the world becomes a flooded. It's in a, it's in a flooded. Um, Kind of world scenario, and uh, and be how the flooded world becomes um, populated with the relatively fantastical stuff that we find in, in the Moon King. Well, certainly from <clears throat> from the novel, and uh, just from speaking to you as well, and, and mm -hmm. just about the way that you uh, your creative process seems to work, you seem to it seems to snowball almost into one creative idea becomes another, and there's a lot. Do you sometimes struggle to channel those into a, a, you know, because obviously within a story it's good to have great ideas, but to have something which is a channeled into a straight kind of narrative almost? That's a really good question. Um, yes, yeah, um, you've got to be aware of that all the time. You've got to be aware of, um, you have the idea and you think that's a cool idea, and then you say to yourself, but how, how, how does it affect the story? Um, is, it, is it too much? Um, is it going to take the story in a, in a different direction? Is it okay if it takes it in a different direction than I thought it was going to go to? Which is just what's happened actually. If, um, 
in in the novel and writing, I'd, I'd just had a new idea, gone back, threaded it through the entire narrative, and gone, oh wait a minute, but that means all that stuff's wrong, so all that has to come out, and so um, it's a long way to write a novel. Yeah, I'm, I'm noticing. Yeah, well, Neil, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, speaking to you, and good luck with the awards later. Thanks very much. And uh, for whatever lies on.